Section 1 He puts an end to darkness. Rabbi Shia introduces a discussion on the secret nature of good and evil. Rabbi Shimon then defines evil as the end of the left, that is, the lack of remembrance or connection between the left and right columns. The friends relate this phenomenon to the dreams of Yosef and the Pharaoh Yosef's dream of a river signifies the end of darkness and evil and the beginning of peace and plenty. The relevance of this passage, the energy arising from it. Mystical shapes of the Hebrew letters enlightens us to the severity of our negative actions and their consequences. Negative behavior rooted in the left column refers to selfish indulgence without regard or concern for others. Awareness and careful management of both columns of receiving and of sharing bring lasting light to our lives. Inattention to either column creates imbalance. Sharing without receiving right column without left column, for example, quickly depletes our resources if we share water from a glass without replenishment. The glass will soon be empty. Receiving without sharing is like casting a dehydrated man into the middle of a raging sea, though he is in desperate need of water. Overabundance eventually drowns him. Reading the section has a stabilizing effect on our spirituality and on the decisions we make intuitively. We begin making that strike a delicate balance between knowing when to share and when to receive one, and it came to pass at the end of two years. Bereshi 411 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse he puts an end to darkness and searches out all perfection the stone of darkness and the shadow of death. Eo 283 he puts an end to darkness is the end of the left which is not included within the right it is the Satan the angel of death he hovers about the world and incites people to sin he hovers above and stands before the Holy One blessed be he and blames and accuses the world as it is written he searches out all perfection. Heptically for his deeds are not intended to achieve good but rather to exterminate heblech a lot and bring extinction to the world as he takes the souls of men and kills them too. The stone of darkness and the shadow of death refers to a stumbling stone namely the Satan who is called a stumbling stone because the wicked stumble and sin on it abides in that which is called the land of bloom as darkness itself. Eo 1022 come and behold there is a land of the living above which is it. Land of Israel, namely the Nukba of Zeir and there is a land below called darkness and the shadow of death, namely the darkness that is issued from the land of gloom, which is the Nukba of the Klippa. What are the stone of darkness and the shadow of death? They are the end on the side of darkness, they are the Satan, the dross of gold, as we have already learned. Three come and behold how much it behooves men to look into the worship of the Holy One, blessed be he, and strive to study the Torah day and night, so they will know and behold his worship. For the Torah proclaims every day before men, saying, Whoever is simple, let him turn in here as for him that lacks understanding. She says to him, Mishlei 94, we have already explained this matter. For when a man studies the Torah and cleaves to it, he is strengthened in the tree of life, which is Zeir and as it is written, the tree of life. Mishlei 318, come and behold, when a man is strengthened in the tree of life in this world, he is. Strengthened in it for the world to come, and when the souls leave this world, grades are prepared for them in the world to come. Five come, and behold, the tree of life is divided into several grades, but they are all unified into one. For in the tree of life there are grades upon grades, branches, leaves, husks, the trunk, and the roots. All of them are the tree in the same manner. Whoever strives to study the Torah is strengthened and improved by the tree of life, namely in the trunk of the tree. Six. All those of the faith of Israel are strengthened by the tree of life. They all hold onto the tree, but some of them hold onto the trunk, some to the branches, some to the leaves, and some to the roots. It seems therefore that they hold onto the tree of life. All of those who are occupied in the study of the Torah hold to the trunk of the tree, and for that reason he who studies the Torah holds onto the whole tree because the tree trunk includes all of it. This has already been explained. Seven and it. Came to pass at the end, he asks what is the meaning of the end. Rabbi Shimon replied that this is a place in which there is no remembrance. The end of the left, what does this mean? For it is written, but think of me, live, remember when it shall be well with you. Bereshi 4014, he asks, is it proper for Yosef the righteous to say, but remember me? And he answers when Yosef looked at the dream, he said, this is assuredly a dream of remembrance, but he was wrong because it all came from the holy. One blessed be eight, therefore the place of forgetfulness rose against him. It is written, nevertheless, the chief butler did not remember Yosef, but forgot him. He asks if it is said, the chief butler did not remember why then add, but forgot him. He answers, but forgot him, indicates the place in which there is forgetfulness, which is called to the end on the side of darkness. He asks, what are the two years? And he answers, the grade of forgetfulness returned after that time to the grade in. Which there is remembrance nine that Pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river concerns the dream of Yosef namely a dream of remembrance that refers to Yosef because every river is part of Yosef the righteous this is the hidden meaning of the thought that whoever sees a river in his dream sees peace which is the great of Yosef that is Yosef as it is written I will extend peace to her like a river Yeshua 6612 as river alludes to Yosef section 2 and it came to pass at the end of two years here the rabbis discuss Yosef's sojourn in Egypt Yosef is compared to King David who at a later time occupied a similar position in relation to the world above and the world below the king by justice establishes the land but he who exacts gifts overthrows it the king is the Pharaoh of Moshe's time his lack of faith and his inability to interpret the true meaning of his dream bring destruction to his realm the relevance of this passage Yosef's sojourn. In Egypt is a metaphor for the soul's human incarnation in the material world. Yosef represents the soul and Egypt the negativity of the body. King David also represents the realm of Malchut. Our lower dimension man's spiritual work is to rise above the temptations of material existence by removing the blinders that prevent us from recognizing the divinity in the world, the foolishness of our negative behavior and the consequences of our negative deeds. This elevated consciousness is stimulated by reading the section 10 and it came to pass at the end of two years. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse. The king by justice establishes the land but he who exacts gifts overthrows it. Mishlei 294 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created the upper world by it. He made everything properly and created bright lights that shone in all directions. These represent the three columns and all is united into one. He created heaven above which is Zeir and the earth. Below which is the Nukba to combine as one by the Zeir and Nukba to benefit the lower beings eleven come and behold in the verse the king by justice establishes the land who is the king he is the holy one blessed be he by the words by justice refer to Yaakov that is Zeir and who forms the foundation of the land therefore the letter Bob in the name Yudhe Bob which is Zeir and is sustained by the upper hay in the name Yudhe Bob which is by the lower hay in the name Yudhe Bob which is the Nukba is sustained by the Bob which is Zeir and because justice establishes the land with all its needs and nourishes it twelve another explanation of the king is that it refers to the holy one blessed be he while justice refers to Yosef who established the land as it is written and all countries lit and all the land came to Egypt to Yosef to buy provisions Bereshi 4157 because the holy one blessed be he favored Yaakov he made him governor of all the land 13 Rabbi Yossi said the king is Yosef and by justice is Yaakov because as long as Yaakov did not come to Egypt the land was beset by famine after Yaakov came to Egypt by his merit the famine was gone and the land was established 14 another explanation is that the king by justice establishes the land refers to King David as it is written and David reigned over all Israel and David executed judgment and righteousness to all his people 2 Samuel 815 he established the land during his lifetime and by his merit it stood after his demise the phrase but he who exacts gifts overthrows it refers to reach 15 come and behold for the sake of the righteous the holy one blessed be he did not impose punishment that had been decreed on the world so it will not have sway over the world all the days of King David the land was established for his sake after he died it continued because of his merit as it is written and I will defend the city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake, 2 Melashim 206. Similarly, no punishment was inflicted on the world during all the days of Yaakov and all the days of Yosef as the famine ceased for their sakes and the enslaving by Egypt was delayed. 16 Come and behold the verse. The king by justice establishes the land refers to Yosef, but he who exacts gifts overthrows it refers to Pharaoh because Pharaoh hardened his heart against the Holy One. Blessed be he, the land of Egypt was destroyed before that. The land was thriving through Yosef in accordance with Pharaoh's
Bears are burdened to 6820. The name Adonai is spelled Aleph Dalad Nunyad, which alludes to the Mukbah. This verse contains a mystery of wisdom. Day by day is the secret of two years, lit two years, days, which are the two grades, Bana and Zeir, and for the Mukbah is blessed only by them. This is as it is written, and it came to pass at the end of two years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. We have already learned the secret, it means Yosef, because the words are river. Refer to Yosef the righteous 19 the verse, and behold, there came up out of the river seven cows well favored and fat of flesh, and they fed in the reed grass reeds out of the river, because from this river which is Yezid, all the grades below are blessed, because the river that flows from Eden, which is by the waters and sustains everything, and Yosef who is Yezid is a river, and the whole land of Egypt is blessed for his sake. 20 come and behold from that river, namely Yezid the seven. Grades of the Mukbah, Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Had Yezid, and Malchut in her that were extending from her and were standing in the world of Briah are watered and blessed by it. These are the seven well favored and fat of flesh cows who fed in the reed grass that I asked. They fed together in friendship, and there was no separation among them. All of them stand to be praised, for there is no nourishment for the other side, for these seven grades are the mystery of the verse and the seven maids. Chosen to be given her out of the king's house, Esther 29, which refers to the seven temples of Bria, all of which are praiseworthy, and so are the seven cows well favored, all to be praised. In contrast, the seven chamberlains who served in the presence of the king, Tehillim 110, are not to be wholly praised, for they include a portion of the powers of defilement, which is the secret of the seven lean cows. 21 Rabbi Yitzhak said the seven good cows are grades superior to other grades, whereas the seven ill favored cows are the grades below, the upper ones are on the side of holiness, and the lower ones on the side of defilement. 22 The seven ears of grains, Rabbi Yehuda said that the first seven ears are good because they are of the right side, about which it is written, it was good deal, and then seven ears are beneath them, the seven good ears are on the side of purity, and the ill ones are on the side of impurity, these grades all stand on top of each other against each other. Pharaoh saw all of them in his dream. 23 Rabbi Yes asked, How could they have shown the evil Pharaoh all these grades? Rabbi Yehuda answers, He only saw their likeness, not the grades themselves, for there are grades upon grades all stand on top of each other, of which Pharaoh saw only their images. 24 We have already learned that a man's character is revealed in his dreams as his soul ascends, he will perceive that which he deserves according to his great Pharaoh, therefore saw what he was worthy of seeing, and no more. 25 And it came to pass in the end, Rabbi Shishkiah began with the verse, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Kahilat 31 Come and behold what the Holy One blessed be he did below. He set a time for everything and fixed a term for it. He fixed a term for light and darkness. He set a time for light for all nations except Israel, which now have mastery over the world, and he set time for darkness when Israel are in exile and under the dominion of other nations, the Holy One blessed be he appointed a season for all, and therefore to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. He asks what is the meaning of and a time to every purpose. He replies, It means a time and season for everything that is below, that is for all the goodness found below has a set time and season. 26 Another explanation for and a time to every purpose. He asks what is time. He answers, It is the same as mentioned in the verses. It is time to act for Hashem. They have made void your Torah. Tehillim 119,126 And that he come not at all times into the holy place. Vayikra 162 This is a great appointed to lead the world, namely the Mukbah, and has already been explained. Therefore, the scriptures explain that time the Mukbah is appointed over every purpose under the heaven, and it came to pass at the end of two years refers to the side of the end of darkness, for he set an appointed time for light and darkness that Pharaoh. Had seen in his dream, this is where he derived his knowledge from, and the dream was revealed to him. Section 3 His spirit was troubled. This passage deals with Pharaoh's troubled spirit caused by his inability to interpret his dream. The rabbis compare Pharaoh's state of mind to that of Nebuchadnezzar during the Babylonian captivity. Rabbi Yitzhak maintains that kings and other heads of state are occasionally granted glimpses of the hidden world, usually only provided to the prophets of Israel. The relevance of this passage each night our soul ascends to higher realms where it receives dream messages that can influence us in our spiritual endeavors depending on our actions and interactions during the previous day. These messages can advance or hinder our efforts. Positive actions arouse prophetic messages of truth while negative behavior invokes deceitful messages and disingenuous dreams. Here we receive assistance in making positive use of our sleep so that our dreams can provide reliable glimpses of the future. 27 And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. Hebat PM. He asks, What does Vat PM mean? Rabbi Yossi said, It has already been explained of Pharaoh. It is written, Vat PM. And of Nebuchadnezzar, it is written, His spirit was troubled. Hebat PM. Daniel 21 Pharaoh is described as Vat PM because he comprehended the dream but not its interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar, on the other hand, saw the dream and its interpretation but forgot everything. It is therefore written, Vat PM with an extra 1028. But come and behold, and his spirit was troubled. Hebat PM corresponds to, and the spirit of Hashem began to move him. Hebat Amo shoved him 1325 for the spirit would appear and disappear. Come and go yet not settle upon him properly. It is therefore written, and the spirit of Hashem began to move him. When the spirit just began to inspire him here also, the spirit would appear and leave then. Appear again, but would not settle upon him so that he could understand of Nebuchadnezzar. It is written, and his spirit was troubled. Hebat PM, for the inspiration of the spirit was twice as strong because he understood neither the dream nor its interpretation. The spirits would come and go as it is written, as on previous occasions. Hebat Kafam Bifam lit as time to time. Ishmuel 310 now upon this and now upon that, but his mind was not settled. 29 the verse, and he sent and called for. All the magicians of Egypt refers to the sorcerers, and all her wise men refers to the astrologers. They all tried to understand, but could not. 30 Rabbi Yitzhak said, although we have learned that a man is shown only what is appropriate to his grade, this is not true for kings. They are shown supernal things that are different from those that other people are shown because a king is of a superior grade than other men, that which he is shown is of a higher grade than the rest, as it is written. What the Elohim are about to do, he has declared to Pharaoh, Bershi 4125, but to other men, the Holy One, blessed be, he does not reveal his works, he reveals them only to the prophets, the pious, and the wise men of the ages, as has already been explained. 31 Come and behold, it is written, Me he restored to my office, and him he hanged. Bershi 4113, from this we understand that a dream follows its interpretation, who is referred to in the phrase, Me he restored to my office, it is Yosef also. Yosef hanged him because of his interpretation of the dream, and so it is written, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was a bit. Section 4, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. This passage discourses on the allegorical meaning of Pharaoh's elevation of Yosef. Rabbi Abba maintains that the verse reveals the benefits of standing in awe of God and of studying Torah at night. The text then moves to a discussion of Ecclesiastes Kahilated points. Out that while we cannot control what comes into our eyes and ears, we can control what comes out of our mouths. Therefore, speak not evil. A discussion follows on the nature of time, the timing of good deeds, the valuable lessons to be learned from our mistakes, and the dilemma of those caught in an evil time. The relevance of this passage words are vessels that draw particular blends of energy into our lives. Human speech possesses power that can directly influence the world around us. Hence, we should take great care in choosing what we say. Although we are initially given an unlimited amount of time to live in this world and accomplish our spiritual purpose, every negative word decreases the length of our state. Positive words do not add time to our lives, but they also do not detract from it. This passage helps us use our speech for spiritual purposes so that our words inspire light in others instead of adding darkness to the world. 32 Then Pharaoh sent and called Yosef and they. Brought him hastily out of the dungeon. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse. Hashem takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope for his mercy. Tell him 14,711. How much the Holy One blessed be he delights in the righteous for they make peace above in Abba and I am a they make peace below in Zeir
Yosef was sad in mind and spirit because he was imprisoned once Pharaoh had sent for him it is written and they brought him hastily which means that he appeased him and addressed him with joyful words that gladden the heart why because he was dejected from sitting in the dungeon lit pit come and behold first he fell into a pit and from which he later rose to greatness 35 Rabbi Shimon said before the incident happened Yosef was not called righteous after he guarded the holy covenant by not sinning with Potiphar's wife he was called righteous and the great of the holy covenant is it decorated him that which was first in the dungeon the clip rose with him it is written and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon for he had ascended from the clip and was adorned with the well of living water the Shechina 36 then Pharaoh sent and called Yosef he said it should have been written to call Yosef instead of and called which interrupts the phrase he answers it was the Holy One blessed be he who called to bring him from the pit as it is written until the time that his word came to pass the word of Hashem had tested him Tehillim 10,519 the verse until the time that his word came to pass is similar to the phrase and called Yosef for it was the Holy One blessed be he who called him it is written here and called Yosef and elsewhere and he called to Moshe Vayikra 11 in both passages it was the Holy One blessed be he who called him and he shaved himself and changed his garments out of respect for the king as he had to stand before Pharaoh 37 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the verse so Israel came into Egypt and Yaakov sojourned in the land of Sham Vayikra 123 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he directs events and fulfills vows and oaths in order to fulfill the vow and edict he decreed 38 we have learned that were it not for the fondness and affection the Holy One blessed be he bore for the patriarchs. Yaakov would have had to go down to Egypt in iron chains in his love for them he made Yosef his son ruler and governor over the whole land the tribes then went to Egypt honored and Yaakov was as a king 39 come and behold it is written so Israel came into Egypt and Yaakov sojourned in the land of Sham he asks because it is written so Israel came into Egypt it is understood that Yaakov sojourned in the land of Sham why should he have added it he replies so Israel came into Egypt refers to the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir and been called Israel and, and Yaakov sojourned in the land of Sham refers to Yaakov because it was for the sake of Yaakov and his sons that the Shechina came down to Egypt the Holy One blessed be he planned events so that Yosef was brought down first for as a result of his merit the covenant dwelt with him and made him ruler over the whole land 40 it is written the king sent and loosed him and the ruler of the people let him go free. Tehillim 10,520 Rabbi Shimon said it is written Hashem loses the prisoners Tehillim 1,467 and the king sent and loosed him why did he repeat the thought by saying and the ruler of the people let him go free he answers the king is the holy one blessed be he and the ruler of the people is the holy one blessed be he the meaning of the verse is the king refers to the supernal king Zeir and Ben who sent and loosed him whom did he send the redeeming angel the Mukbe who is ruler of it people and rules below in the lower world all comes from the holy one blessed be he 41 the word Beret Suhu and they brought him hastily is spelled without the letter Bob to indicate that it is singular instead of plural who brought him hastily from the dungeon the holy one blessed be he for there is no one else who imprisons and frees people from prison as it is written he shuts up a man and there can be no opening he of 1,214 and when he gives quietness who then can condemn and when he hides his face who then can behold him whether against a nation or against a man alike Eo 3429 for everything depends upon him as it is written and he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say to him what do you Daniel 432 hence it is written and they he brought him hastily out of the dungeon that is the holy one blessed be he brought him hastily out of the dungeon 42 he asks what is the meaning of and he brought him hastily have so he replies as he shall pray to Aloha and he will be favorable to him have so Eo 3326 means the holy one blessed be he was favorable to him so the verse and he brought him hastily out of the dungeon means that the holy one blessed be he was favorable to him and he was brought before Pharaoh another explanation is that who I derived from will Hebertson and grace for he drew upon him a thread of grace so he will find grace before Pharaoh he addressed him with Elohim shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace to hasten to greet him and open his speech with the word peace 43 Rabbi Abba said come and behold see the wicked Pharaoh who said I know not Hashem yet Hebab hey Shema 52 as he was wiser than all his magicians how could he have not known why you did Hebab hey he answers assuredly he knew the name of Elohim as it is written can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of Elohim bear she 4138 however because Moshe came before him with the name of Hashem only it was hard for him to understand anything more for he knew that Elohim was ruler over the land but he did not know the name Hashem therefore he found this name difficult to grasp 44 this is why it is written and Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh it was the word why you did Hebab hey that hardened his heart and made him headstrong Moshe therefore spoke to him only by the name Yehebab hey as has already been explained 45 He opened the discussion with the verse who is like Hashem our Elohim who is enthroned on high who looks far down to behold Tehillim 1135 to 6 who is like Hashem our Elohim who is enthroned on high means that he rises above his throne of glory not to be revealed below for when there are no righteous to be found in the world he is gone from them and does not reveal himself to them the phrase who looks far down to behold refers to the time when the righteous are found in the world and it Holy One blessed be he descends to the lower ones to take care of the world and do good by them 46 for when there are no righteous men in the world he is gone hides his face from them and does not pay attention to them this is because the righteous are the foundation and existence of the world as it is written and the righteous is an everlasting foundation Mishlei 1025 47 the Holy One blessed be he therefore revealed his holy name to Israel alone who are his portion lot and Inheritance the Holy One blessed be he divided the world among the mighty chieftains of seventy ministers as we have learned from the verse he set the borders of the P.E.O.P. Lefer Hashem's portion is his people Yaakov is a lot of his inheritance Devarim 32 8 to 9 48 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were walking together Rabbi Yossi said I wonder about the words of King Solomon for all his speeches are obscure and the words of Kahilat are vague 49 he began with the verse all things are full of weariness man cannot utter it the eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing Kahilat 18 he asks if all things are full of weariness are they all too weary to speak some things clearly are not he also quoted the verse man cannot utter it the eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing why did precisely these occur to him he answers two of them eyes and ears are not under a man's control the mouth however is under his control thus he teaches us that although these organs comprise all the faculties of man they cannot comprehend and conceive everything the question is therefore settled for all things are full of weariness means that the eyes ears and mouth cannot comprehend everything 50 Rabbi Shia said it is so a man's speech cannot utter nor the eyes see and the ears hear and there is nothing new under the sun Kahilat 19 come and behold even the ghosts and spirits of the Holy One blessed be he formed under the sun cannot say all that there is in the world nor can the eyes see or the ear hear Solomon who knew everything therefore said this 51 come and behold all actions in the world depend on many chieftains for there is not one herb below that has not a chief over it who commands grow yet all the people in the world do not know or care about their roots or why they are in the world for even King Solomon who was wiser than any other man could not grasp them 52 he opened the discussion by quoting he has Made everything beautiful in its time also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work which the Elohim has made. Kahila 311 come and behold happy are those who study the Torah and know how to observe with the spirit of wisdom. He has made everything beautiful in its time refers to all the works that the Holy One blessed be he performed in the world over every action in the world there is a great in charge either for good or for evil these are the 28 times. Mentioned by Kahila 14 for good on the right in the secret of the Shechina and 14 for evil on the left in the secret of the other side that punishes men from them some grades go to the right and some to the left when a man goes to the right the deed he performs the grade appointed over that right side gives him help if a man goes to the left and performs a certain deed the chief of the left side denounces him for that deed conducts him to that side and leads him
that they give below they cause the great called all let everything is it to illuminate in its time and with the 54 woe to the wicked who do not know the time namely the time of peace for the action and do not pay attention so that they perform their actions for the sake of needed improvement in the world and correct the deed in its appropriate grade this means that they do not elevate the main with female waters by their works to supernal union which is the secret of time of peace they do not do so because they do not know this 55 therefore everything is given to man's desire as it is written so that no man can find out the work which the Elohim has made from the beginning to the end because these deeds were not performed with the intention of correcting them according to their appropriate grades that is to include the deeds in their corresponding grade they are accomplished according to man's desire and stubbornness of this it is written I know that there is nothing good in them but to rejoice and to do good in his life Kahilah 312 I know there is nothing good in them in the deeds that are not properly performed with the purpose of correcting dash but to rejoice at whatever comes upon him either good or bad to thank the Holy One blessed be he and to do good in his life he asks why should he rejoice at evil he answers if the deed brought evil consequences because of the grade appointed over it on the left side he should rejoice and be thankful for the evil he deserved for he himself caused all this by going without knowledge as a bird falling into a snare now that he obtained knowledge because of the punishment he would know to do good in his life one should therefore rejoice and be thankful for punishment 56 he asks how do we know that a man is without knowledge he answers from the verse for man also knows not his time like the fishes that are taken in an evil net and like the birds that are caught in the snare so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them Kahila 912 he asks what is the time in for man also knows not his time he replies his time of the deed he has done as it is written he has made everything beautiful in its time he is therefore like the birds that are caught in the snare happy then are those who are occupied in the study of the Torah who know the ways and roads of the Torah of the most hiking because they can walk in it on the path of truth 57 come and behold a man should never open his mouth to speak evil for he knows not who receives his word and when a man does not know he may stumble when the righteous open their mouths they do so peacefully when Yosef addressed Pharaoh he first said Elohim shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace Rabbi Yehuda said we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he cares for the peace of the kingdom as it is written and he gave them a charge to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh the king of Egypt. Shemot 613 and they explained it meaning to give honor to Pharaoh section 5 since Elohim has shown you all this here the Zohar speculates on the hidden meaning of Yosef's successful interpretation of Pharaoh's dream and the resulting prosperity for both himself and the people of Israel the rabbis compare Yosef's experience to that of Daniel in Babylon they proceed to describe Yosef's work as Pharaoh's minister of agriculture and minister of finance and praises. Wisdom and discretion in both posts an interesting passage concerns God's ability to create demand in order to benefit those who are able to supply the relevance of this passage a reading of this section helps us to recognize the links between causes and effects and to govern our actions accordingly in this way when life makes demands on us we can know they are only for our benefit 58 Rabbi Shia said Pharaoh wished to test Yosef and therefore mix the words of his dream but Yosef who recognized the grades alluded to in the dream looked into each matter and said you have seen it this way and arranged everything in a proper manner 59 it is written and Pharaoh said to Yosef since Elohim has shown you all this there is none so discreet and wise as you are the phrase since Elohim has shown you means because you were there when I had this dream therefore he said all this because you knew the dream and its interpretation 60 Rabbi Yitzhak said if this be so then Yosef told everything the dream and its interpretation just like Daniel who told the dream and its interpretation he said to him there is no resemblance between the cases Yosef looked into the words of Pharaoh who told the content of his dream through certain grades and saw he was mistaken because he told it not according to the order that prevails in the grades of that dream he said to Pharaoh you have not seen it this way but rather that way for the grades have a particular order Daniel on. The other hand did not derive anything from Nebuchadnezzar but, but rather told him everything the dream and its interpretation 61 in relation to Daniel the verse says then was the secret revealed to Daniel in a night vision Daniel 219 he asks what is the night vision he replies it is Gabriel who is a vision a vision from a vision 62 come and behold it is written and behold the glory of the Elohim of Israel came from the way of the east and his voice was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory, Yeshua 432. This is followed by, and the appearance of the earth shone with his glory, and the appearance of the vision which I saw was like the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Kabar, and I fell upon my face, Yeshua 433. All the visions mentioned in the verse correspond to six grades. A vision of a vision, Gabriel has a mirror that reflects the upper hues, thus the six mirrors of the Mukba reflected in this mirror, Gabriel. There are visions upon visions, every vision is on top of another, and all within certain grades, Jesus, Vira, Typhoret, Net, Sachat, and Yezid, where they have dominion by the name of night vision. All the dreams in the world are interpreted through them, they resemble those above them. The six visions of the Mukba 63 to Daniel, though the secret revealed it in a night vision, he did not find it himself once the secret had been revealed, one of the grades of the night vision told him of the dream and its interpretation but Yosef from the words of Pharaoh beheld the high grades to which the dream alluded and revealed its interpretation to Pharaoh 64 Pharaoh therefore gave him command over the whole land of Egypt because the Holy One blessed be he gave Yosef from his own because his mouth did not kiss transgression it is said according to your mouth shall my people be ruled because his hand did not come near sinning it is written and put it on Yosef's hand because the neck did not approach sin it is written and put a gold chain about his neck because the body did not get nice in it is written arrayed him in garments of fine linen because the foot did not ride to transgression it is written he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had because his mind did not harbor sinful thought he was called discreet and wise and because his heart did not reflect upon sin they cried before him every lip by the knee Received what was properly a 65 it is written and Yosef went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. Rabbi Shizkiah asks why did he go through all the land of Egypt? He answers he did so to establish his rule over them by their crying before him every each another reason was to gather grain from every district. Rabbi Lazar said Yosef gathered the grain of every district, the food of the field which was round about every city laid he up within it and not in another place so it would not rot for it is the nature of a place to preserve its fruit. 66 Rabbi Shimon said the Holy One blessed be he created everything in such a manner as to benefit Israel this he did because he wanted to fulfill his promise come and behold first he supplied the world with its needs and then he put man in it and gave him sustenance. 67 similarly the Holy One blessed be he said to Abraham no surely that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not their sand afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Beersheet 1513 to 14. When Yosef arrived in Egypt, there was no great substance in it to correct this. The Holy One blessed be he brought famine upon the world people and brought silver and gold to Egypt until the land of Egypt was filled with silver and gold. After great substance was acquired, he brought Yaakov to Egypt. 68. These are the ways of the Holy One blessed be he. He first creates the medicine and then inflicts the wound. First he brought great substance to Egypt and then he brought them into exile. He arranged matters and brought famine upon the whole world so that people would bring silver and gold from all over the world into Egypt. 69. Come and behold, for the sake of the righteous Yosef, he caused Israel to obtain riches silver and gold as it is written. He brought them forth also with silver and gold and there was not one who stumbled among their tribes. Tehillim 10,537. This came upon Israel by the hand of a righteous man all in order to make them merit the world to come 70 he opened the discussion with the verse live joyfully with the wife whom you love Kahilah 99 come and behold this verse is explained according to a supernal secret thus live joyfully let's see a life alludes to life in the world to come for happy is he who merits it as he should 71 the phrase with the wife whom you love refers to the congregation of Israel which is referred to with love and I have loved you with an everlasting love your maya 313 when is that at the time the right side takes hold of it as it is written therefore with Jesus have I drawn you with Jesus being the right side 72 the verse continues with all the days of the life of your
There is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in SHOL where you go. Kahilat 910 We have to study the verse which reads Whatever your hand finds to do is there no longer any fear of punishment can a man do whatever he wishes and is able to do he answered it is written do it with your strength your strength is man's soul which gives him strength to merit this world and the world to come 75 Another explanation is that your strength is the wife we mentioned the congregation of Israel, who is a source of strength in this world and the world to come, a man should merit this world by means of that strength, so he will be able to draw strength from it in the world to come. 76. Why do we have to strengthen ourselves with good deeds in this world? Because after a man leaves this world, he has no more power to do anything he cannot say from now on. I will perform good deeds. Assuredly, this is true, for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in SHOL. And if a man does not acquire merit in this world, he will not do so in the world to come. It has been explained that he who has not laid up provisions for the journey from this world will have nothing to eat in the other world. There are some good deeds a man does in this world whose fruit he may enjoy here in this world, but the main reward is sustenance in the world to come. 77. Come and behold, Joseph merited this world and merited the world to come because he wished to be united with a wife who feared. Hashem the Nukba the secret of this world as it is written and sinned against Elohim. Bereshit 399 the Nukba called Elohim he therefore deserved to be ruler over this world and to cause Israel to acquire merit. 78 it is written and Yosef gathered all the money. Bereshit 4714 so it should be for the river which flows from Eden. Yes it called Yosef gathers everything by comprising and receiving from all the Sphira and comprises all kinds of riches. This is the secret of the verse and Elohim. Set them in the firmament of heaven. Bereshit 117 for Yes it called firmament shines on the earth. The secret of the Nukba all is as it should be for surely Yosef the secret of Yes it should rule over the kingdom. Malchut the Nukba and shower abundance upon her. 79 come and behold the verse and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. He asks what is the second chariot he replied the Holy One blessed be he made the righteous governor because the world the Nukba is and should be. Sustained by him, the Holy One, blessed be he has an upper chariot, Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, and Malchut above the chest of Zeir and Banana, lower chariot, the secret of the Nukba, the lower chariot is called the second chariot, and Yosef, who is called righteous, namely, Yezid, is worthy of riding the second chariot of the Holy One, blessed be he is, is his likeness in the world above 80. Come and behold, and they cried before him, Average, he asks what is an average, he answers, he is the connection between the sun and the moon, the secret of Yezid, which joins Zeir and Banana, Nukba, everybody kneels to that place for bowing during prayer, alludes to Yezid, who is called Blessed Hebbarak, and is called Average after the kneeling, which is derived from the verse, and he made his camels kneel, Hebbarak, Bereshit 2411, and he rules over the whole world, the Nukba, and all the inhabitants of the world are thankful for the plenty it pours on them all, and proceeds according to the supreme mystery. 81 Come and behold the Holy One, blessed be He created the kingdom of the earth in the likeness of the kingdom of heaven, thus the one resembles the other, for whatever is on earth has a counterpart in heaven, whatever is manifest on earth appeared first before the Holy One, blessed be He in heaven, come and behold the Holy Malchute did not reach completion until it was united with the patriarchs, for the Holy One, blessed be He made the upper Malchute so it would shine from the secret of the fathers. 82 After Yosef the righteous went down to Egypt, he drew the Shechinah to him, for the Shechinah follows only the righteous, hence Yosef first went down to Egypt and received all the wealth of the world as he deserved, and the Shechinah went down to Egypt with all the tribes. 83 By keeping the Holy Covenant, Yosef merited to be adorned in his place, that is, to become a chariot to Yezid of Zeir and attain the upper kingdom and the lower kingdom, whoever guards the Holy Covenant is. Considered to be observing the Holy Torah in its entirety for the covenant corresponds to the whole Torah section 6. Now Yaakov saw that there were provisions in Egypt. Rabbi Shi offers a discourse on the subject of judgment, specifically the manner through which judgment is executed in this physical world. We learn that when a man transgresses supernal justice, the laws of cause and effect decrees that an immediate punishment should take place. However, the Creator, ever merciful, carries our burdens for us and thus he inserts time into the process, delaying the consequences of our crimes. This temporary postponement gives man the opportunity to repent and atone for his iniquities. Rabbi Shimon then explicates upon the power of sadness how it banishes the light of the Creator from our being. It therefore behooves a man to always maintain a positive outlook and please perspective, especially during trying times as the Rabbi Yesa and Rabbi Shiski embark on. Their travels, Rabbi Yesa reveals that every man has a definite and clear-cut spiritual path laid out for him. The other side, however, constantly diverts man from his true path so that he ends up traveling treacherous mountains as opposed to a lush green sun-soaked valley. The relevance of this passage when life appears to be calm and water still we must realize that the Creator is carrying all of our judgments for us. We should use these moments to repent and proactively uproot our negative traits. We should intensify and slash or renew our commitments to the spiritual path before the weight of judgments becomes too great to bear and they come crashing down upon us without warning. 84. Now Yaakov saw that there were provisions in Egypt. This verse is difficult to understand because the Shechinah left him when Yosef was sold. Therefore, how could he have seen that there were provisions in Egypt? Rabbi Shi opened the discussion with the verse the burden of the word of Hashem concerning. Israel, the saying of Hashem who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of men within him. Zechariah 121. We have to study this verse carefully. He asks what is the meaning of burden in the various passages. He answers whenever the word burden is used in reference to judging other nations, the word has a good meaning. Whenever it is used in reference to Israel, it has an evil meaning. 85. He explained wherever it speaks of judging the other nations. The word burden has a good meaning because it is used literally for the welfare of the idolatrous nations is a burden to the Holy One. Blessed be he, but when judgment is upon them, he removes the burden he assumed for their sake. Hence, when burden is mentioned in relation to them, it is for good. Wherever judgment has been pronounced upon Israel and the word burden is used, it is a burden on the Holy One. Blessed be he to punish Israel, it is a double burden because it is a burden for him when he does punish them and when he does not it is a burden for him if he does not punish them they will remain defiled by sin if he does punish them he is sorry for their troubles therefore when burden I as mentioned in regard to them it is for evil 86 he asks after the words who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth why is it added and forms the spirit of men within him would not we know he forms the spirit of men within him if it were not written he replies these words point at a certain grade where all the spirits and souls of the world are found namely the nukva where the spirits and souls stand and from whom the lower ones receive 87 rabbi shimon said this verse is difficult if it said forms the spirit of man it would suffice but what is the meaning of within him he answers the secret of this verse is on the two sides is it and the nukva for from the river which flows and comes out from eden is it all the souls come out and soar into one Place the nukva that great Yezid forms the spirit of man within him within the nukva which resembles a woman who conceives from a man whose fetus presses her bowels until it is fully formed in her belly thus he forms the spirit of man within him within the nukva and the spirit stands there to be formed until man enters the world and she gives him the spirit 88 another explanation for forms the spirit of man within him is that it means within man himself not in the supernal nukva for when a man is created the holy one blessed be he provides him with his soul only then is he born into the world the spirit finds that it does not have enough room to expand within the body so it stands on one side namely the right instead of expanding right and left 89 when a man's body grows the spirit also grows and gives its strength when the body grows the spirit allots its power with which to strengthen itself thus he indeed forms the spirit of man within him 90 you may ask about the meaning of the phrase forms the spirit of man within him he explained because the spirit needs additional strength as support from above the holy one blessed be he forms the spirit of man within him and thus enables it to expand within man 91 come and behold when that spirit needs help it is perfected from above in accordance with man's worth and the condition of his body it is also given an additional spirit for whoever wishes to be purified his help this is the meaning of forms the spirit of man within him man
of wine as they were walking. Rabbi Yesus said to Rabbi Shizkiah, Open your mouth and give one of those beautiful expositions on the Torah that you deliver daily before the Holy Lab. 96. He opened the discussion with the verse, Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Mishlei 317. Her ways are ways of pleasantness refers to the ways of the Torah, for whoever walks in them, the Holy One, blessed be he, causes the pleasantness of the Shechinah to rest upon him and never do. Pass away her paths are peace for all the paths of the Torah are peaceful thus he enjoys peace above and below peace in this world and in the world to come. 97 The Jews said this verse is like a coin in the pocket because the hidden meaning of the verse contains a secret. They asked him how do you know this he answered I learned it from my father. He began his exposition this verse concerns two matters namely ways and paths and two aspects namely pleasantness and peace. He asks what are ways and what are paths what is pleasantness and what is peace. 98 He answered her ways are ways of pleasantness is referred to in the verse who makes a way in the sea. Yeshaya 4316 for wherever a way is mentioned in the Torah it is a way open for all a material way accessible to everybody thus her ways are ways of pleasantness are the ways opened by the fathers namely Chesed Bure and Tiferet called Avraham Itzhak and Yadikeo who opened them up in the great sea and traversed lights. Shine from them and illuminate every corner across the whole length and breadth of the world. 99 The pleasantness is issued from the world to come where all the lights shine and diverge in every direction that is diverged to the three columns right, left, and central. The goodness and light of the world to come which the patriarchs inherit are called pleasantness. Another explanation is that the world to come itself is called pleasantness when it is aroused to illumination every joy goodness. Light and freedom are aroused thus it is called pleasantness. 100 We have learned that when Shabbat comes the wicked in Gehenom take rest and obtain freedom and respite at the end of Shabbat it behooves us to arouse the supernal joy to save us from the punishment of the wicked who are condemned from that moment onward we should arise and say and let the pleasantness of Hashem our Elohim be upon us. Tehillim 9017 which alludes to the supernal pleasantness that cheers everything 101. And all her paths are peace. He asks, What are her paths? He replies, They are the paths that descend from above, gathered by the covenant Yezid, which is called peace. Household peace, it carries the paths into the great sea when it is agitated and brings it peace. This is the meaning of the verse. And all her paths are peace. Come and behold, Yosef was the covenant of peace that is, he received these paths and became ruler over the land. But Yaakov, from whom the Sheshanah departed, did not know it. 102 Nevertheless, Yaakov had misfortune Hepshiver, so he had to buy provisions Hepshiver in Egypt and saw misfortune Hepshiver after misfortune in his sons going down to Egypt. Hence, Yaakov said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? Bear she 421 You should show yourselves as hungry people who have not enough to eat. 103 Rabbi Shizkiah said, Assuredly, a mystery lies here, for whenever there is sorrow in the world, a man should refrain from being seen in the marketplace so as not to. Be caught for his sins. This is because his accusers might see him in a public place, accuse him, and reveal his misdeeds in order to punish him. Yea, KOB, therefore ask them, Why do you look at one another? Also, why are you afraid? IT behooves you to be aware of the accusers. This has already been explained. 104. Another explanation of the verse. Now, Yaakov saw that there were provisions in Egypt. Yes, that the word Shiver means real provisions and is not an allusion to a calamity, as was said. Earlier, the Holy One, blessed be he, sent famine into the world to bring Yaakov and his sons there. Yaakov therefore saw the people of the country bringing provisions from their 105. Now, Yaakov saw that there were provisions in Egypt when its died. Yaakov and Esau came to divide his inheritance. Esau renounced his share of the land and everything else by leaving and avoiding the exile. Yaakov received it all by suffering the exile. That is, this was their compromise. Yaakov saw it. Calamity awaiting him and his sons in Egypt, the endurance of the exile. This is why Yaakov asked his sons, Why are you afraid of the supernal justice? Are you not afraid lest the accuser will find you? I have heard that there are provisions in Egypt. Go down there, Hebrew. It has already been explained that the numerical value of Hebrew is 210. The number of years Israel stayed in Egypt, section 7, and Yosef was the governor of the land. This passage speculates on the secret meanings of Yosef's triumph in Egypt. It tells us that his victory was also won against the hidden powers of evil on the left. That is, the evil inclination. The relevance of this passage, Egypt, is a metaphor for the human ego or evil inclination, which is rooted in the left column strength and discipline to triumph over egocentric desires and evil tendencies are summoned forth in our souls as we scan the Hebrew letters of this passage. 106, and Yosef was the governor of the land. Rabbi Yesa opened the discussion with the verse, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices with trumpet sound. I will sing, and I will make melody to Hashem. Tehillim 276. Come and behold, when the Holy One blessed be, he takes pleasure in a man. He raises him above all the inhabitants of the world and makes him ruler over them. All his enemies are subdued under him. 107. King David was hated and rejected by his brothers, and the Holy One blessed be, he raised him above all the inhabitants of the world. He fled from Shal, his father-in-law, and the Holy One blessed be, he raised him above all kingdoms and everyone bowed and knelt before him. Yosef was rejected by his brothers, and afterward they all knelt and prostrated themselves before him, as it is written. And Yosef's brothers came and bowed themselves down before him with their faces to the earth. Bereshit 426, 108. And now have Yehuda shall my head be lifted. Up he asks what is the meaning of Beyeda. He said that of as you have Beyeda, Rabbi Yehuda said we have learned that ET time is a supernal grade, that time is the hay in the name Yud Hey Vav, namely the Sheshana called Atan. Now Beyeda with the letter Vav refers to Zeir Anpin and his court of justice, the Nukva, just as the Vav of Beyeda alludes to Zeir Anpin 109. And now shall my head be lifted up, I will lift up my head through dignity and dominion above my enemies round about me. The other kings of the land, therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle refers to Jerusalem sacrifices with trumpet sound that will sound throughout the world. I will sing and I will make melody from the side of the trumpet sound, for from their song and melody arise 110 according to another explanation. And now shall my head be lifted up refers to the congregation of Israel, namely the Nukva called Atan, and the phrase above my enemies round about me refers to Ezav and his ministers, I will. Offering his tabernacle in the midst of Israel, sacrifices with trumpet sound also a breaking as it is written the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit. Tehillim 5119 In order to remove judgment from the world, I will sing to make melody and I will thank the Holy One. Blessed be he continuously forever. 111 Another explanation of and now shall my head be lifted up is that my head is an allusion to the good inclination. He prayed that in every respect the good inclination shall be lifted above the evil inclination as it is written above my enemies round about me which is an allusion to the evil inclination that surrounds and hates man. I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices with trumpet sound refers to the study of the Torah which was given from the side of fire as it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to arm 332 through the Torah shall his head be lifted up and his enemies subjugated before him as it is written you have subdued under me. Those who rose up against me, Tehillim 1840, 112, another explanation of the verse, and now shall my head be lifted up, is that it means that I shall be included with the fathers, for King David had cleaved to the patriarchs in order to be united with them in the secret of the fourth lay, and to be lifted above and bound to them above my enemies round about me refers to those of the left side, all of them accusers intent upon destruction when he is lifted above them, the sons Eir and is united with the moon, the Nukba, and all becomes one, 113, come and behold, it is written, and Yosef was the governor of the land, Yosef is the sons Eir and for Yosef is Yezid of Eir and which rules over the moon, the Nukba shining upon and sustaining her, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land as the river that flows and comes are from Eden, Yezid called Yosef supplies everybody with nourishment from there, the souls of every man emerge, hence everyone goes before that place. For there is nothing in the world that does not depend upon Mazel as has already been explained. Section 8 And Yosef recognized his brothers. The Zohar examines
is he who fears yet does not know what he fears because he commits sins unknowingly he therefore fears the days of evil 115 he asks what are the days of evil he said these are days meant for evil it is the evil inclination called evil which on certain days is given permission in the world to lead astray those who defile their ways by spilling semen in vain whoever wishes to be polluted is defiled they are called days of evil reserved for punishment for transgressions that a man treads under his heels 116 come and behold packs of fiends await to defile those who defile their ways a man is led in the very way he chooses to walk a man who wishes to be purified has many helpers 117 we have learned that when a man wakes up in the morning he should wash his hands with a labor and he should be washed by someone who has already washed as has been explained come and behold we have learned all this for the sake of the labor this exposition was meant to teach us that we need a labor to wash our hands in the morning 118 we also learned that a man should wash his right hand with his left hand so that the left will serve the right and the right will thus be stronger than the left the right should be laid by the left the washing is expressly intended to ensure that the right will rule over the left therefore when washing hands it behooves one to wash the right with the left thus causing the right to rule over the left so as not to give the evil inclination and opening to rule at all 119 come and behold when evil judgment reigns it does not refrain from harming even the righteous for when the destroyer is given sway he does not discriminate between good and evil when the right rules over the idolatrous nations to break them the holy one blessed be he feels pity for them and does not destroy them you may see here the great difference between the compassion of the right and the judgment of the left 120 therefore when one unknowingly commits Sins that are tread under his heels he is always afraid King David was always guarded from such sins and when he went to battle he searched for them in order to repent he therefore was not afraid to wage war 121 come and behold there were four kings each of whom asked for a different thing David said let me pursue my enemies and overtake them neither let me turn back till they are consumed Talim 1838 why did he say that because he was guarded from sins that are tread under the heels and gave no opening to his enemies to rule he therefore pursued them continuously rather than having them chase him catch him and indict him for his sins 122 Asa was more fearful although he searched for his sins he was not as thorough as King David he merely wished to pursue his enemies but not to fight them and hoped that the Holy One blessed be he would slay them and so it came to pass as it is written and Asa and the people who were with him pursued them so Hashem smote the Kushim. Before Asa and before Yehuda and the Kushim fled to Debrahim and 1411 to 12 of David the scripture reads and David smote them from the twilight to the evening of the next day Ishmael 3017 but Asa merely pursued them and the Holy One blessed be he slew them 123 Yehoshaphat the king of Yehuda also said I can neither pursue nor kill them but I shall sing hymns and you shall kill them this was because he did not examine himself as Asa did yet the Holy One blessed be he did as he was requested as it is written and when they began to sing and to praise Hashem set an ambush against the children of Ammon and Mount Seir who were come against Yehuda and they were rooted to Debrahim and 2022 124 Shishkiah the king of Yehuda said I can neither chant pursue nor wage war for he was afraid of the sins we mentioned that are tread under the heels it is written and it came to pass that night that the angel of Hashem went out and smote in the camp of Ashur 185,000 and went. They arose early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses to Melashim 1935 Shishkiah was then at home lying in bed and the Holy One blessed be he killed them 125 how fearful were these righteous men on account of their sins how much more fearful should the inhabitants of the world be a man should therefore always be on his guard against these sins and search for them so that the days of evil which have no mercy on him will not have control over him 126 come and behold and Yosef knew his brethren means that when they fell into his hands he felt pity for them because he was whole but they knew him not refers to Shimon and Levi who came from the side of harsh judgment and therefore did not have pity on him for all those from the side of harsh judgment have no pity on the people who fall into their hands they are of the aspect of the days of evil which do not pity men as has already been said 127 David therefore said why should I fear the days of evil he did not say I feared in the past tense but rather should fear in the present tense which means that he is still fearful thus he said I should always fear the days of evil as we have said the iniquity of my persecutors lit my heels compasses me about he asks what are my heels he answers they are in the secret of the faith namely in holiness as it is written and his hand took hold on his heel bear she 2526 esav's heel was in the secret of the faith in holiness because yaya kaobis hand took hold of it this heel hebak of which it is written the iniquity of my heels compasses me about represents the footprints hebak that follow the same transgression that a man constantly treads under his heels 128 come and behold the verse woe to them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a card rope kishaya 518 the cords of vanity are the sins that he treads under his heels without thinking of it they are then strengthened into a card rope the sins become stronger and lead him astray in this world and the world to come 129 happy are the righteous who know how to be guarded against their sins and always examine their deeds so that no accuser will be found against them in this world nor turn them from their way in the world to come the Torah prepares for them ways and paths on which to walk as it is written her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace section 9 and Yosef remembered the dreams the commentators stress the importance of remembering one's dreams and presenting them to a sympathetic audience of friends in order to obtain a favorable interpretation the necessity of obeying every last precept of the Torah is also discussed the rabbis use the example of King Solomon who ruined his posterity by disobeying the injunction against polygamy rabbi Yossi comments on the verse treasures of wickedness profit nothing that is to say wealth gained in an impure Matter will soon disappear but the righteous life of Torah study endures the relevance of this passage dreams can assist us in our spiritual development however our dreams should only be interpreted by someone who loves us since the interpretation itself influences its physical manifestation the light of this passage helps bring loving people into our lives when the need for dream interpretation arises in addition the passage allows our dreams to be derived from the highest realms of the spiritual atmosphere ensuring positive and truthful messages pertaining to the verse treasures of wickedness profit nothing the Zohar teaches us that a narcissistic self-serving pursuit for wealth power and position will ultimately lead to ruin in some area of life the influences emanating from the Hebrew verses imbue us with wisdom and strength to resist trading away life's true fulfillment marriage children friendship and spiritual fulfillment for the fleeting pleasure of ego Gratification 130 and Yosef remembered the dreams which he had dreamed. Bear she 429 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Mishlei 2417 Come and behold the Holy One blessed be he created man so that he would be worthy of his glory serve him always and be occupied with the Torah day and night because the Holy One blessed be he ever takes delight in the Torah 131 when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam he put the Torah before him and taught him how to know its ways how do we know this from the words then he saw it and declared it he established it yet and searched it out which is followed by and to man he said behold the fear of Hashem that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding Eov 2827 to 28 because he inquired into her but did not keep her he transgressed the command of his master and was caught for his sin 132 all those who transgress one precept of the Torah are caught for it. King Solomon who was wisest among all the people in the world transgressed only one precept of the Torah by having many wives and caused his kingdom to pass on from him because as the sages said Ashmi Dayesmet who made an ignorant man of him and caused his kingdom to be divided from the time of his sons this is even truer for those who transgress many precepts of the Torah 133 he asks Yosef knew the Torah and her words you shall not avenge nor bear any grudge Vayikra 1918 why then when his brothers fell into his hands did he bring upon them all these things when he knew the Torah his father had taught him he replied heaven forbid to think that Yosef took revenge upon them he did it only to bring his brother by Yaman to him for he longed for him he did not leave his brothers wanting as it is written and Yosef gave orders to fill their sacks with grain bear she 4225 so they would not come to grief 134 Rabbi Yehuda continued with the verse then he saw it Iyob 2827 when the Holy One blessed be he created the moon and looked but he beheld her constantly as it is
Other side will not nourish itself from her 136. He then warned man thus and to man he said, Behold the fear of Hashem that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding. Eo 2828 Because of the fear of Hashem the Mukba is adorned with all the lower ones so they will learn to fear and know Hashem through her strength. She is therefore Chakma and to depart from evil is understanding had by the separation of pollution so it will not approach holiness is the purpose of it. Existence of Bina that I asked the knowledge and beholding of the glory of the highest king 137 Rabbi Yussi rose one night to study the Torah there happened to be a Jew there whom he met in that house Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion with the verse treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness also charity delivers from death Mishlei 102 treasures of wickedness profit nothing are those who are not occupied with the study of the Torah but follow worldly matters and gather wicked treasures of them it is written but those riches perish by evil adventure Kahila 513 because they are wicked treasures 138 but righteousness delivers from death refers to those who are occupied with the study of the Torah and know how to study her ways for the Torah is called the tree of life and righteousness as it is written and it shall be accounted righteousness in us to 625 another explanation of but righteousness delivers from death is that it refers to charity given to the poor there are two ways to read and understand it the word righteousness may be understood as the Torah or it may simply mean charity it all is one 139 that you said you may read in the word righteousness the meaning of peace Rabbi Yossi said to him assuredly she is called peace the Jew rose to study the Torah with him the Jew quoted the verse he who tills his land shall have plenty of bread but he who follows after vain persons shall have poverty enough Mishlei 2819 this verse is difficult to understand how could King Solomon who was the wisest of all men say that a man should strive to cultivate the earth till it and neglect everlasting life 140 he replied there is a mystery here he then quoted the verse and Hashem Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to till also to worship it and to keep Beersheet 215 it has already been explained that it refers to worship by sacrificing come and behold to till it is the upper king that is it refers to the drawing of plenty of blessings from the upper king Zeir and, and to keep is the lower king that is it refers to the keeping of plenty received by the lower king the Mukba the verse refers to the upper world Zeir and, and the lower world the Mukba he further explains that to till it is in the secret of remember Zeir and, and keep is in the secret of keep the Mukba therefore in the first tables of the testimony it is written remember the Shabbat day Shema 28 and in the second tables of the testimony it is written keep the Shabbat day Devarim 512 141 therefore he that tills his land Mishlei 1211 refers to the garden of Eden in the Mukba for man should work and draw blessings on it from Zeir and, and above when it is blessed and blessings pour on it from above man is blessed with it come and behold when the priest blesses he is also blessed as it is written and I will bless them Bar 527 hence he that tills his land to draw plenty on the Mukba shall have Plenty of bread nourishment from above which he earns by his work for he who blesses is blessed but he that follows vain persons he who cleaves to the other side which follows vain persons surely shall have poverty enough Rabbi Yussi said to him happy are you to have merited this 142 he then cited a verse that comes after the verse he that tills his land it is a faithful man shall abound with blessings Mishlei 2820 which alludes to a man who has faith in the Holy One blessed be he. Such as Rabbi Yesusaba the elder who though he had food for that day did not set the table before praying for food before the Holy King after praying and asking for nourishment from the King he would set the table he always said let us not set the table until nourishment is given from the King's house 143 but he who makes haste to be rich shall not go unpunished Mishlei 2820 because he did not want to study the Torah which is life in this world and life in the world to come now is it. Time to be occupied with the Torah let us do so 144 the man opened with the mystery of the dream he said and Yosef remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them he asked about the words and Yosef remembered the dreams why did Yosef remember the dreams he had about them what would have happened if he forgot them as Yosef was wise and studied the verse a prudent man acts with knowledge but a fool lays bare his folly Mishlei 1316 145 he replies when Yosef saw them bowing before him with their faces to the earth he remembered the dream he dreamed about them as it is written and lo my sheep arose and also stood upright and behold your sheep stood round about and bowed down to my sheep bear sheep 377 for when he saw his brothers prostrating themselves before him as it is written and Yosef's brothers came and bowed themselves down before him with their faces to the earth then Yosef remembered of the dreams which he had dreamed that is he saw them coming true. Thus and Yosef remembered the dreams means that he saw that they came true 146 and Yosef remembered the dreams which he had dreamed can also mean that he was reminded of them because there is no forgetfulness before the Holy One blessed be he a man should remember a good dream so it is not forgotten for then it is realized but if it is forgotten by him it is forgotten above and does not come true 147 come and behold a dream that was not interpreted resembles an unopened letter for the dreamer does not derive any benefit from IT come and behold he who does not remember the dream acts as if he did not know how to interpret IT therefore whoever forgets his dream and cannot recall it will find his dream unfulfilled Yosef therefore remembered his dream and never forgot it so it would come true he waited for it all the time he said to them you are spies bear she 429 although he remembered the dream he said nothing except you are spies 148 Rabbi Yossi continued with the verse for a dream comes through a multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Kahila 52 he explained that a dream comes through a multitude of business means there are many who help the dream endure including chiefs and grades upon grades for some dreams are all truth and some contain both truth and lies that is one part will come true and another will not but the truly righteous are shown no lies in their dreams they are shown only truth 149 come and behold it is written of Daniel then to Daniel in a vision of the night namely in a dream the secret was revealed Daniel 219 and Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay upon his bed and he wrote his dream Daniel 71 had the dream contained lies the book of Daniel would not be among the scriptures but when the souls of the truly righteous ascend during sleep only holy beings join them these holy beings tell them true words enduring words that never lie 150 you may say that King David never had a good dream it may be concluded that he saw untrue things yet in fact he was full of kindness and the grace of Hashem he answered surely it was because he spent his days shedding blood and engaging in war thus all his dreams were bad dreams about destruction waste blood and bloodshed and not peaceful dreams 151 it may be asked how a good man could possibly be shown a bad dream he replies surely all the evil is destined to cleave to those who transgress the words of it. Torah and the punishment destined for them in the world of truth was seen by King David so that the fear of his master will be upon him at all times this settles the question how he could have seen untrue things he saw them in relation to sinners for whom they were real he was shown this to arouse the fear of heaven in him it has been said with regard to the verse and Elohim does it so that men should fear before him Kahila 314 that it is a bad dream which causes a man to be fearful. Righteous man is therefore shown a bad dream as we have already said 152 come and behold we have learned that when a man has a dream he should speak about it he should seek an interpretation before his friends whose wishes will be favorable toward him and whose words will be expressed for his good thus their wishes and words will be for the good their wishes which is thought namely Chakma is the beginning of everything of the Sfirat and the word namely Malchut is the completion of everything of the Sfirat thus it is made whole by the supernal mystery because of the presence of the beginning and the end of the Sfirat and all of it comes true moreover they ask for compassion for that man and ask that the good interpretation they gave will endure thus all is as it should be 153 the Holy One blessed be he then lets each man interpret his dream according to his worth and grade the Jew said assuredly the dream is but for the righteous man who sees dreams properly 154. Come and behold when a man sleeps in his bed his soul departs and roams in the world above it enters wherever it can and camps of spirits that hover in the world meet the soul if that man is righteous the soul ascends and sees good things if he is not righteous the soul holds to the other side and is told lies or things that will happen in the near future 155 therefore a man who is not righteous is shown a good but untruthful dream so that he will turn from the way of truth once he turns.
have heard that Yosef is of the world of the male being of Yezid of Zeir and Ben and all the tribes were of the world of the female namely the Shechina Yosef therefore had no part in the standards being of the world of the male 158 it is written we have Nashnu are all one man's sons Bershi 4211 he asks why is it written Nashnu instead of the standard form and Nashnu why is the Aleph missing he answers because the secret of the covenant which is Yosef was not among them the Aleph was gone and it was written Nashnu thus because the Aleph is male and Bet is female the Aleph Yosef was gone and only the female letters of Nashnu remained with the Shechina which contains the secret of the tribes 159 they later said we have a Nashnu are true man Bershi 4211 with the letter Aleph added they said it yet knew not what they said for it was because of Yosef that they uttered the complete word in Nashnu how do we know this from the verse and they said your servants are 12 we are have a national brothers bear she 4213 including Yosef thus when Yosef was included they said a national and when he was not they said national 160 rabbi Yossi said all the things we have said delighted the holy one blessed be he because the Shechina did not depart from here this is in accordance with the verse then they who feared Hashem spoke to one another and Hashem here can and heard it and the book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Hashem and took heed of his name Malachi 316 section 10 and he put them all together into custody the verses relate the 12 signs of the zodiac to the 12 sons of Yaakov and the 12 tribes of Israel Yosef who shows mercy to his treacherous brother becomes a patriarch rabbi Lazar speculates on the hidden meaning of this occurrence the relevance of this passage celestial influences arising from the 12 signs impel but they do not compel we have the power to rise above there Influence we transcend the signs and their corresponding negative influences as we visually connect with these ancient mystical texts 161 and he put them all together into custody for three days Bershi 4217 Rabbi Lazar asked why for three days he answers these three days correspond to the days of Shem of which it is written and it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain Bershi 3425 162 come and behold it is written with regard to this and Yosef said to them on the third day this do and live this teaches us that he did not act toward them as they did towards Shem they made the people of Shem accept upon them as heads out the Mukva called this and the secret of the covenant because the covenant which is the secret of Yezid is attached to her and when they were circumcised they were killed and not one witness was left but he said it is written this do and live that is he will let them live the reason is that I fear the Elohim who keeps the covenant and everything he did was only for the sake of Baniam and that is to make them bring Binyamin 163 and they said one to the other truly we are guilty Bershi 4221 the phrase one to another lit man to his brother refers to Shimon and Levi just as in an earlier passage and they said one to another behold this dreamer comes Bershi 3719 both verses refer to Shimon and Levi 164 come and behold who is a man and who is his brother he answers the man is Shimon who is here mentioned as man as he is elsewhere for example in the verse and behold a man of the children of Israel came Bimidbar 256 in both verses a man is Shimon and since he repented he cried and felt remorse for what he did and said to Levi truly we are guilty therefore when he repented Shimon sign became Taurus there are 12 signs that correspond to the 12 tribes Aries to Reuben Taurus to Shimon and so on Shimon sign is Taurus just as Yosef sign is as it is written his Firstly, bullet majesty is his Devarim 3317 section 11 and took from them Shimon this passage comments on the mercy Yosef shows his brothers the commentators assert that even idolaters are not punished if they live in peace the secret meaning of circumcision and its relation to the covenant are also discussed whoever is charitable in this world is free of harsh judgment in the next us like Yosef we are encouraged to turn the other cheek and leave vengeance to the Lord the relevance of this passage judgments decreed against us are measured and meted out in accordance to the degree and severity of the judgments we pass on our friends and foes trust in the creator encompasses certainty in the laws of cause and effect which dictate that all our enemies will be correctly judged without our having to participate in the correction process a person who has attained spiritual enlightenment accepts any wrongs committed against him as payment for negative Actions he may have committed in the past this wise perspective is stimulated by the divine light of this Hebrew script 165 he therefore took from them Shimon Bershi 4224 so that he would not indict him together with Levi for when they came together Shimon and Levi might bring accusations the phrase and bound him before their eyes means that he arrested him only in front of their eyes when they left he gave him food and drink 166 it may be said that Yosef acted according to the verse if your enemy is hungry give him bread to eat and if he is thirsty give him water to drink Mishlei 2521 for this reason he fed Shimon who was his enemy how could the righteous Yosef have behaved in such a manner as he ends with the words for you shall heap coals of fire on his head and Hashem shall reward you it is not seemly for a righteous man to take revenge upon his brother 167 he answers heaven forbid that Yosef had such intentions his conduct toward him was only that of a man toward his brother and in no other way and not to him alone but to all his brothers he behaved so as it is written then Yosef gave orders to fill their sacks with grain and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way and thus it was performed Bershi 4225 all to be brotherly toward them 168 Rabbi Yossi continued with the verse though they are at peace and likewise many even so they shall be cut down and it shall pass away though I have afflicted you I will afflict you no more Nashim 112 this verse has been explained as follows when the people are peaceful with no dissension in their midst the holy one blessed be he has pity on them and judgment has no sway even if they worship idols if they are at peace no judgment has power over them it can also be explained in relation to the verse Ephraim is joined to idols let him alone Hashia 417 it means that even though they serve idols if they are joined let him alone 169 he Asks what then is the meaning of the phrase even so they shall be cut down also sure and he answers as it talks of peace in the beginning here it likewise talks of peace which means charity for charity is peace and whoever promotes charity promotes peace above and below hence the scripture reads even so they shall be shorn and it shall pass away the word shorn refers to those who shear their money for charity even so indicates that as the beginning talks of peace here also it talks of peace namely charity as has been explained of the phrase it shall pass away he asks should it have been written they shall pass away in the plural just as it is written they will be cut down why is it written it shall pass away he replies the subject is wrathful judgment just as in the verse until the indignation be overpassed Yeshua 2620 it means until judgment passes away from them 170 another explanation is that the verse thus says Hashem though if they are a peace also Whole refers to Israel to whom the Holy One blessed be he gave an everlasting covenant namely circumcision to keep always so as to be whole on all sides Jesus Bure Tiferet and Malkot above and below that are net sash and hot if man does not guard the covenant at all times he is defective in every respect how do we know this from the verse walk before me and be perfect Bear sheet 171 perfect means whole and we derive from this that before the covenant was established in him before he was circumcised he was defective 171 therefore if they be whole means if they observe the precept of circumcision and are therefore whole instead of defective and likewise many namely they will increase and multiply for souls come into the world only through the covenant and they shall be cut down refers to the first phrase if they be whole and constantly guard the covenant namely they shall be cut down those who are circumcised and accept upon him the covenant cut down is derived from shearing and cutting then it shall pass away the filth of the foreskin that was upon them 172 another interpretation of thus says Hashem if they be whole and likewise many is that these are the children of Yaakov who as long as they were with Yosef were whole because they were joined with the covenant which is Yosef even so they shall be cut down Hebnagazu means when they went away and left Yosef and Shimon Nagazu is derived from passing away as in it is soon past Hebgez and we fly away Tehillim 9010 then it shall pass away means that then judgment is passed upon them as it is written and Hashem will pass through to smite Egypt Shemot 1223 in both verses pass alludes to judgment 173 come and behold there is harsh judgment and mild judgment the harsh judgment is strong and the mild weak when the mild judgment is nourished from the harsh it becomes powerful 174 when judgment is executed upon Israel it is mild and not strengthened by harsh judgment.
When ten gather together in the synagogue and one of them leaves, then the Holy One blessed be he is angered with him for the brothers of Yosef were ten after they separated from Yosef and Shimon they remained nine and the Holy One blessed be he became angry 175 Another explanation of the verse even so they shall be cut down Hadnagazu is that when evil actions are removed from them Hadnagazu in the same meaning as it is soon passed as then it shall pass away who shall pass away. Rabbi Shimon answered when the soul leaves this world it is sentenced to several punishments before going to its place afterward all the souls have to pass through and wash in the flowing of her diner river of fire of whoever will rise and pass the river fearlessly it is written who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem Tehillim 243 the soul of the righteous passes without fear and shall stand in his holy place of 176 whoever is charitable in the world and gives from his money to charity passes that place in her diner the river of fire without fear the crier proclaims before the soul and though I have afflicted you I will afflict you no more Nashim 112 which is the last phrase in the verse for whoever merited to pass in her diner the river of fire is free of judgments 177 come and behold why was all that passed between Yosef and his brothers recorded in the Torah he answers the Torah is of truth all her ways are holy there is not one word in the Torah that does not Contain holy and supernal mysteries and ways in which men can be strengthened. 178. He opened the discussion with the verse. Do not say, I will repay evil. Mishlei 2022. Come and behold, the Holy One blessed be he created man so he would strengthen himself in the Torah and walk the way of truth, staying on the right side and avoiding the left. Because men should walk on the right side, they have to increase love between them as love is of the right side and avoid hatred among them as hatred is of the left side, so as not to weaken the right, which is the place to which Israel cleave. 179. Come and behold, for this purpose, the good inclination and the evil inclination exist. Israel should make the good inclination master over the evil through good deeds. If a man turns to the left, the evil inclination overpowers the good and the defective one. The evil inclination is made whole through his sin, for the ugly one only becomes whole through men. Since 180, a man should therefore be. Careful lest the evil inclination be made whole through his sins, he should always be guarded to make whole the good inclination instead of the evil. Therefore, do not say, I will repay also complete evil, because through hatred you shall increase the power of the left and complete the evil inclination. Only say, Wait on Hashem and he will save you. 181. Another explanation of the verse, do not say, I will repay evil, is that it has the same meaning as the verse, whoever rewards evil for good. Mishlei 1713. One should not repay a person who did him good with evil, because whoever rewards evil for good evil shall not depart from his house. But even if a person caused him evil, he must not reward evil with evil. But wait on Hashem and he will save you. 182. This verse has been explained in relation to Yosef the righteous who did not wish to repay his brothers with evil when they fell into his hands, as it is written, Do not say, I will repay evil, but wait on Hashem and he will save you. Mishlei 2022 For he feared the Holy One, blessed be he, as it is written, this too, and live I fear Elohim. Gershi 4218 He always waited on the Holy One, blessed be he. 183 Rabbi Abba opened with the verse, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Mishlei 205 Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water refers to the Holy One, blessed be he, who gave counsel by bringing about events by the hands of Yosef to fulfill the decree of famine upon the world, but a man of understanding will draw it out refers to Yosef who revealed the deep meanings of the decree of the Holy One, blessed be he, over the world through the interpretation of the dream. 184 Come and behold, Yosef not only abstained from causing evil to his brothers, he also did kindness and truth by them. This is always the way of the righteous, therefore the Holy One, blessed be he, always has compassion for them in this world and the world to come. 185 Counsel in the heart. A man is like deep water can also refer to Yehuda when he approached Yosef on behalf of Baniam in the phrase a man of understanding will draw it out refers to Yosef when he made himself known to his brothers 186 Rabbi Abba sat at the gate of the city lot he saw a man sitting on a ledge protruding from a mountainside he was weary from the road so he sat down and slept while he was sleeping he saw a snake coming toward him a reptile emerged and killed the snake when the man woke he saw the dead snake he stood up and the ledge which had been torn from the mountain fell to the valley below thus he was saved for had he risen a moment later he would have fallen together with the ledge into the valley and been killed 187 Rabbi Abba came to him and said what have you done that the Holy One blessed be he performed for you two miracles saving you from the snake and from the ledge that fell for these events did not happen without reason 188 the man said in all my days I forgave and made peace with any man who did evil by me. If I could not make peace with him, I did not sleep on my bed before forgiving him and all those who grieved me. Thus I did not harbor hatred all that day for the harm he did me. Moreover, from that day on I tried to do kindness by them. 189 Rabbi Abba wept and said, This man's deeds exceed those of Yosef. As for Yosef, those who injured him were his brothers. Assuredly, he should have pitted them from brotherhood. But this one behaved so to any man, so he is greater than Yosef and is worthy to have the Holy One. Blessed be he perform one miracle after the other for his sake. 190 He opened the discussion with the verse, He that walks uprightly walks surely, but he that perverts his ways shall be found out. Mishlei 109 He that walks uprightly refers to the man who walks the ways of the Torah. He will walk surely, for no fiend in the world will be able to harm him, but he that perverts his ways shall be found out. He asks who shall be found out. He answers he who deviates from the way of truth and plans to repay his friend evil for evil thereby transgressing the stricture in the verse you shall not avenge nor bear any grudge. Vayikra 1918 the phrase shall be found out means that he will be recognized by all the prosecutors who will not forget the image of that man and will bring him account measure for measure the scripture therefore reads shall be found out 191 come and behold he who walks the way of truth is hidden by the holy one blessed be he so that he will not be found nor recognized by the prosecutors but he that perverts his ways shall be found out and will be known to them happy are the men who walk the way of truth walk surely in the world and have no fear in this world or the world to come section 12 and the men were afraid because they were brought into Yosef's house the Zohar comments on the fear felt by Yosef's brothers it meditates on the nature of sin and evil and Asserts that only by concentrating on the day of judgment at all times and by avoiding one pride and fornication can we be free of the evil inclination. Whoever has sins on his hands is always afraid. Thus Joseph's brothers were full of fear when they were brought into his house. The relevance of this passage, a literal interpretation of biblical text, limits it to extremist views that can be misconstrued as puritanical. The Kabbalists of antiquity shed light on the deeper significance of it. Above versus fear of sin and the avoidance of one pride and infidelity are not just moral values rooted in religious authority. Rather, there is a practical benefit to engaging in positive behavior. Kabbalah teaches us how to elevate all physical activity to the level of the spiritual. For example, relations between a man and wife are made more passionate when a man directs his sexual drive exclusively towards his spouse, limiting carnal activity to the spiritual confines of his marriage. Similarly. Wine draws down enormous spiritual light when used as part of a blessing but brings alcoholism and spiritual darkness when used for self-indulgent purposes. Our eyes are open to these insightful truths as we peruse these passages 192 and the men were afraid because they were brought into Yosef's house. Verse 4318 Rabbi Yossi said, Woe to the men who do not know nor reflect upon the ways of the Torah. Woe to them at the time the Holy One blessed be he will demand justice for their deeds. When the body and soul will rise to account for all they did before the soul separated from the body. 193 That day is the day of judgment when the books where men's deeds are written are open. The prosecutors are in place and the serpent is ready to bite all the members of the body quiver before it and the soul is separated from the body to roam and hover without knowing where it should go and to which place it will be raised. 194 Woe to that day a day of ire and wrath it behooves man. Then to face his evil inclination and remember that he will have to stand in the king's judgment and that he will be put beneath the ground to rot while the soul will be separated from him. 195 We have learned that a man should always apply himself to arousing the good inclination against the evil inclination. If evil departs that is fine if not he should study the Torah for only the Torah breaks the evil
World 199 come and behold and the men were afraid because they were brought into Yusuf's house with all their might and strength one youth who brought them into Yusuf's house made them afraid how much more should we be afraid when the Holy One blessed be he will demand justice of man 200 hence a man should strive in this world to be strengthened by the Holy One blessed be he and put his trust in him and though he sinned if he fully repents the Holy One blessed be he is able to overlook wrong and forgive him and the man could fortify himself in the Holy One blessed be he as if he had never sinned 201 the tribes were afraid because they sinned in stealing Yusuf they would not have been afraid at all had they not sinned for man sins break his heart and strength why because the good inclination he's crushed within him and he has no power to overcome the evil inclination it is therefore written what man there is that is fearful and faint hearted Devarim 208 that is fearful of the sins upon his hands which break a man's heart 202 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he exacted payments for generations for the tribe's sin of selling Yosef for nothing is lost before the Holy One blessed be he and he demands payment from one generation to the next judgment stands before him constantly until exacted and judgment abides where it should be 203 how do we know this from Shishkiah who sinned by revealing to the idolatrous nations the mysteries of the Holy One blessed be he which he should not have done the Holy One blessed be he sent Yeshayah who said to him behold days are coming that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon Yeshayah 396 204 come and behold what that sin caused it exposed what was hidden and once it was revealed an opening was given for the other side to rule therefore blessing abides only in secret places as has been already Explained blessings dwell on all that is undisclosed once it is revealed there is an opening for another place to have dominion over it 205 it is written all that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness each 18 this alludes to the kingdom of Babylon where a present was sent to Jerusalem as it is written at that time Merodach Baladon the son of Baladon king of Babylon sent letters and a present to Shishkiah who Yeshayah 391 206 in the letters it was written Peace be to Shishkiah the king of Yehuda peace be to the great Elohim and peace be to Jerusalem once he delivered the letter he thought I have not done well in greeting the servant before his master he rose from his throne took three steps and retrieved the letter he wrote another letter in its stead saying peace be to the great Elohim peace to Jerusalem and peace be to Shishkiah these are all that honored her 207 afterwards they despise her why did they despise her because they have seen her nakedness that I asked Shishkiah showed it to them and were it not for that they would not have despised her because Shishkiah was righteous retribution was late in coming and came not in his days as it is written but there shall be peace and truth in my days Yeshayah 398 later the Holy One blessed be he visited his children on account of that sin 208 similarly the sin of the tribes was deferred until a later time for judgment above had no power over them until the time arrived to exact payments thus whoever has sins on his hands is always afraid as it is written and you shall fear day and night Devarim 2866 therefore and the men were afraid because they were brought into Yusuf's house section 13 and he saw by Yam and hope deferred is a heart sickness but desire fulfilled is a tree of life Rabbi Shia comments on this verse to the effect that the negative angel Satan attends those who pray with a specific result in mind but God Quickly answers the prayers of the pure in heart thus Benjamin came quickly to Yosef the passage then digresses into a lament for the destruction of the temple and the pains of exile the relevance of this passage the evil inclination exploits the action of prayer by stimulating feelings of self-righteousness for this reason most prayers go unanswered a holier than thou attitude distinguishes the religious approach to prayer from the authentically spiritual perspective the latter is replete with humility while the religious approach fosters conceit and certitude in one's own purity and devotion the cleansing power of this passage purifies our souls so that we may humbly ask the creator for what we truly need 209 and he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Baniam and his mother's son Bershi 4329 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse hope deferred makes the heart sick is a heart sickness but desire fulfilled is a tree of life Mishlei 1312 from this verse we have learned that a man should not when he prays to the Holy One blessed be he check whether his salvation has come or not what is the reason for this when he looks for it many accusers come to examine his deeds 210 it is a secret that his examination during prayer causes a heart sickness the sickness of heart is he who always stands by man to indict him above and below namely the Satan 211 but desire fulfilled is a tree of life we have learned that he who wants the Holy One blessed be he to accept his prayer should study the Torah which is the tree of life then desire is fulfilled it comes desire is the great presiding over all the prayers in the world namely the Muk that brings them before the highest king Zeirn and this verse says comes just as elsewhere it is written in the evening she comes Esther 214 in both verses the word comes alludes to the Muk but the meaning of desire comes is that she comes before the highest king to be joined with him in Order to grant the wish of he who prays to fulfill his request 212 Another explanation of the verse hope deferred is a heart sickness is that it refers to a place where prayer is misdirected a place called sickness of heart it is slow in coming and is passed from hand to hand sometimes salvation never comes why because it is passed from hand to hand by all the chieftains to be brought down into the world 213 but desire comes is a tree of life when hope is not passed by all the chieftains and chariots from hand to hand the holy one blessed be he gives it immediately for when it is passed by the chieftains and chariots numerous accusers are given permission to examine it and look at the indictments before granting him his salvation but whatever comes from the king's house and is given to man whether he deserves it or not is given to him at once this is the meaning of the phrase but desire comes is a tree of life it comes immediately 214 another explanation of Hope deferred is that it refers to Yaakov whose hope to see Yosef was long deferred and but desire comes as a tree of life refers to Baniam and for only a short time elapsed between Yosef's request for him and his arrival the time elapsed was short it is written and he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Baniam and his mother's son why does the scripture read his mother's son because he had his mother's image he was her very image therefore the verse reads and he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Baniam and his mother's son 215 Rabbi Yossi said it is written earlier and Yosef saw Baniam with them Bershi 4316 and now he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Baniam what did he see here he answers he saw through the Holy Spirit that Baniam will have a place in the Holy Land along with his brothers and that the Sheshana will dwell in the place of Baniam and Yehuda for he saw the temple standing upon their portion this is the meaning of the phrase and Yosef saw Bani Ammon with them but Yosef his brother did not see himself sharing the portion in which the temple would stand 216 when he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Bani and his mother's son Bershi 4329 and saw the temple standing on his portion and it is written and Yosef made haste for his affection was kindled towards his brother and he sought where to weep and he entered into his chamber and wept there Bershi 4330 because he saw the destruction of the temple. 217 Rabbi Shishkiah quoted the verse the burden of the valley of vision what ails you now that you are holy gone up to the housetops Yeshayah 221 come and behold it has been said that when the temple was destroyed and consumed by fire all the priests went up to the roofs of the temple with all the temple's keys in their hands they said until now we have been your treasurers from now on take what is yours 218 yet come and behold the valley of vision is the Shechinah who used to be. In the temple and all the people in the world drew prophecy from her and although the prophets used to prophesize from a different place that is Netzach and Hot of Zeir and they used to draw their prophecies from her the Mukbah because Netzach and Hot of Zeir and gave plenty to the Sheshana who gave the illumination of Netzach and Hot to the prophets she is therefore named after prophecy the Valley of Vision it has been explained that she is called Vision because she reflects all the upper hues the four hues of Zeir and Chakma and Bani Tiferet and Malchut are reflected only in her she is therefore called Vision 219 what else you now that you are holy gone up to the housetops when the temple was destroyed the Sheshana stood in all the places she used to inhabit and wept for her apartment for Israel who went into exile and for all the righteous and the pious who perished there how do we know this from the words a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter Weeping Rachel weeping for her children Yermeah 3114 Rachel was the
B. He replied thus says Hashem keep your voice from weeping. Your Mayah 3115 222 come and behold since the temple was destroyed not a day has passed without curses. This is because as long as the temple existed Israel could worship and offer burnt offerings and sacrifices. The Sheshanah hovered about them in the temple as a mother about her children. All faces were shining until blessings would abide above and below. Not a day passed without blessings and delight Israel dwelt securely in their land and all the world was nourished for their sake. 223 now that the temple is destroyed and the Sheshanah has gone with them into exile. There is not a day without curses. The world is accursed and joys do not dwell above or below. 224 in days to come the Holy One blessed be he will raise the congregation of Israel. The Sheshanah from the dust as it is written even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Yeshayah 567 it is also written. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. Yermeah 318 because at first it is written she weeps sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. Each of twelve they will afterward return weeping from the exile as it is written they shall come with weeping. Section 14 as soon as the morning was light this verse speculates on the meaning of the phrase the morning was light drawing on many precedents from the Torah it uses the phrase to define the healing powers of God the bright future of the people of Israel and the difficulties that will befall their enemies the relevance of this passage the light of the Creator can heal all our ailments but we must have certainty and trust in its power and we must be conscious of sharing this energy with all those in need these healing forces are summoned forth as we meditate upon the primordial letters of creation 225 as soon as the morning was light the men were sent away the end. Their asses bear she 443 Rabbi Lazar said we have to study this verse carefully if they were sent why should the Torah add they and their asses he answers because scripture reads and take us for bondsmen and our asses bear she 4318 the verse the men were sent away they and their asses teaches us that they have not stayed nor have their asses 226 he opened the discussion with the verse and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass bear she 223 that was the morning of Abraham which is Jesus it showed upon the tribes due to Abraham whose merit stood for them and enabled them to go in peace and be delivered from judgment for at that time judgment impended upon them to exact payment and only the merit of Abraham's morning protected them thus they were sent from that place of judgment for it had no power over them at the time 227 Rabbi Yehuda continued with the verse and he shall be as the light of the morning to Shmuel 234 this is the light of Abraham's morning, namely the light of Chesed, when the sun rises, refers to the sun of Yahweh, the light of Tiferet, as it is written, the sun rose upon him. Bereshit 3232 in the morning without clouds means th morning. The light of Chesed is not so cloudy because judgments have no hold upon it, but clear shining after rain, which means the brightness that comes through rain, the rain of the side of its hot, the light of Bura, for that rain causes that the grass springs out of the earth too. Shmuel 23 for 228. Another explanation of the phrase as the light of the morning means that by the light of Abraham's morning, the light of Chesed, the sun rises, which is Yahweh, whose light is as that of that morning of Abraham, being the secret of Tiferet, and shines with covered Chesedim drawn from the light of Chesed. The morning without clouds is not dark, but shining, for when morning the light of Chesed comes, no judgment has sway, all is illuminating on the side of Abraham the right. Side in the clear shining after rain, this is the side of Yosef the righteous who showers upon the earth that is Yezid which gives plenty to the mukva to produce grass and all the goodness of the world. 229 Rabbi Shimon said, Come and behold, when night falls and spreads its wings upon the world, snow white asses which are spirits in the shapes of female asses are appointed to take revenge on those who transgress religion and the law, they will come out and reign over the world. Numerous accusers are aroused on several sides to rule over the world. When morning breaks, they all vanish and lose their dominion, each comes to its fixed position and returns to its place. 230 Another explanation of the phrase, The morning was light, is that when Abraham's morning breaks, the reign of the right begins. The men were sent away refers to the accusers who rule by night, they and their asses. These are the female asses that are appointed over those who transgress religion and the law. They come from the side of defilement being unholy and do not rule and are not seen when morning comes the female asses in charge of sinners are considered the same as male asses 231 there are no upper grades that are not divided into right and left into mercy and judgment there are numerous grades holy on the side of holiness and defiled on the side of defilement all grades stand on top of each other 232 wherever Abraham's morning is awakened into the world the forces of the left are gone and have no sway for they cannot exist on the right side only on the left therefore when morning arrives which is the reign of the right they are forced to vanish the holy one blessed be he made day and night to give each its own proper aspect the right to rule by day and the left to rule by night happy is the portion of Israel in this world and the world to come 233 Rabbi Shia said but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings Malachi. 320 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he will cause to shine upon Israel the sun which from the day the world was created he concealed from the wicked in the world as it is written and from the wicked their light is withheld. Eo 3815 234 the Holy One blessed be he stored that light for when it first came out it shone from one end of the world to the other but when he looked upon the generations of Anosh the generation of the flood the generation of the tower of Babylon and all the wicked ones he stored the light. 235 when Yaakov came to contend with Esau's minister who bid his thigh he limped it is then written the sun rose upon him. Bereshit 3232 what sun is this it is the sun that was stored away which has healing in it to heal his thigh when he was healed through that sun it is written and Yaakov came to Shalem with whole. Bereshit 3318 meaning he was whole in his body and healed 236 the Holy One blessed be he will therefore uncover that sun in it. Future and shine upon Israel as it is written, but to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise. The Son of Righteousness being the Son with which Yaakov was healed, it is with healing in its wings, because everybody will then be healed when the children of Israel rise from the dust. Many will be lame and blind. The Holy One, blessed be He, will shine the healing sun upon them as it is written, with healing in its wings. 237 That sun will then shine from one end of the world to the other. Israel will be cured, but the idolatrous nations will be burned by it. Concerning Israel, the verse reads, Then shall your light break forth like the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of Hashem shall be your regard. Yeshayah 588, section 15. And to Yosef were born two sons before the years of famine came. The subject of this final passage is the nature of the days of evil days. Are not the days of old age, Rabbi Yitzhak explains, but the illumination of the left man should remain chaste in a bad time and not have children, since these strange children would descend from the left side. Thus, Yosef had his sons before the famine struck, neither should a man go forth into the marketplace during the days of evil, since the world is full of satanic accusers lying in wait for the unwary. The relevance of this passage, a man and woman's thoughts during sexual relations help determine the purity of their unborn child's soul. The purer our thoughts at the moment of conception, the finer the grade of soul that is drawn from the upper worlds because of social pressures and our evil inclination. Purifying and controlling our thoughts is a formidable task. The cleansing attributes of the Hebrew letters in this passage help us to prevail over the world's negative influences and to elevate our thoughts and desires. We draw light to our children, which helps purify their souls. 238 Let us return to the subject and to Yosef were born two sons before the years of famine came. Bereshit 4150 Rabbi Yitzhak quoted the verse and the remnant of Yaakov shall be in the midst of many peoples like dew from Hashem like the showers upon the grass that tarries not for man nor waits for the sons of men. Misha 56 Come and behold every day when light breaks a bird awakens on a tree in the garden of Eden and crows three times the twig is straightened and the crier loudly warns. Whoever among you see but see not exist in the world yet do not know why do not care for the glory of their master and do not study the Torah even though it stands before you it is better for you never to have been born why should you exist without understanding woe to you when the days of evil shall bestir themselves against you and banish you from the world. 239 He asks what are the days of evil can they be days of old age not so for days of old age if man has children and grandchildren. Our good days what then are days of evil 240 they are mentioned in
replied, You have made me the first letter in the word Tov good, and the Torah opened by saying that it was good in the verse, and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Verse 13 How could I be united with Resh, which is the first letter in the word Ra evil 242? He said to her, Return to your place, for you have need of the letter Ra, for I wish to create man and include both of you together in him, and he will be created, but with you on the right and her on the left, the letters Tet Resh settled together again 243 The Holy One blessed be he then divided them and separated their illumination the one being holy good and the other holy evil and he created for each certain days and years the secret of the 28 times in Kahilat the ones to the right and the others to the left 14 times for good and 14 for evil the ones to the right are called days of good and the ones to the left are called days of evil Solomon said before the evil days come and encompass man on account of the sins he committed once the days of good and days of evil were created Tet and Resh settled together again to be included within man 244 David therefore asked why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my persecutors compasses me about Tehillim 496 the days of evil assuredly there is a mystery in that the illumination of the left is called days of famine and years of famine and the illumination of the right is called days of plenty and years of plenty 245 The secret is that one should not draw forth the source of the holy covenant that is not perform marital duty in days or years of famine. Yosef therefore the secret of the covenant closed his spring in the year of famine and did not allow it to multiply in the world. Hence the words and to Yosef were born before the years of famine came. Verse 4150 When the year of famine reigns it behooves man to withhold the spring of his holy covenant and not enable the left to multiply in the world. 246 Rabbi Shimon said it is a very deep mystery that when the year of famine the illumination of the left has sway it behooves man to stop his source from begetting children for two reasons. One if he does not stop his source he would draw upon the baby a spirit from the left side and two he would thus give a place to that side thereby strengthening the side of defilement in this world at the expense of the side of holiness regarding the secret. The scripture also reads for three things the earth. Quakes Mishlei 3021 247 For that reason Yosef the righteous who is the secret of the covenant ascended to stop his source during the year of famine so as not to mingle at all with the left and prevent it from ruling over the right of whoever lets his source flow at that time it is written they have dealt treacherously against Hashem for they have begotten strange children Hashia 57 For the children he begets during the years of famine are by necessity strange children according to the first reason given by Rabbi Shimon he draws upon the baby a spirit of that side assuredly they have dealt treacherously against Hashem because according to the second reason they let the left be stronger than the right and thus betray the name of Hashem therefore happy is the portion of holy Israel who did not replace a place of holiness with that of impurity 248 Another explanation of the verse and to Yosef were born two sons before the years of famine came is that ever since the Year of famine came to rule which is left without right he closed his spring and raised up his source so as not to give children to the side of defilement or exchange a holy place for an impure one thereby increasing defilement at the expense of holiness a man should await for his master to come and rule over the world as it is written and I will wait upon Hashem that hides his face from the house of Yaakov and I will hope for him Yeshay 817 249 happy are the righteous who know the ways of the holy one blessed be he observe the precepts of the Torah and follow their course as the ways of Hashem are right and the just do walk in them but the transgressors shall stumble in them Hashia 1410 and but you that did cleave of Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day to Aram 44 250 the holy one blessed be he therefore admonished Israel to sanctify themselves as it is written you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy Vayikra 19 2 he asks who is I he answers it is the Holy One, blessed be he, the sacred kingdom of heaven, namely the Nukba, while the kingdom of the idolatrous nations is called other as it is written, for you shall worship no other El for Hashem whose name is Jealous is a jealous El Shema 3414 251 come and behold I is the government of this world and of the world to come and everything depends upon it as everything depends on the Nukba whoever cleaves to thy namely to the Nukba has a portion in this world and the world to come 252 whoever cleaves to the other one the Nukba of the heathen perishes from the world of truth has no part in the world to come and takes part in the impurity of this world yet he takes part in the defilement of this world for the kingdom of the heathen has numerous legions of accusers through whom it rules over this world 253 therefore Elisha the other who descended and clove to that grave the kingdom of the heathen called other was driven from the world to come he was not given permission to repent but was expelled from the world of truth for which reason he was named other 254 thus a man should separate himself from all these sides in order not to be defiled by that side and thereby merit this world and the world to come thus this nukva of holiness is a blessing and that nukva of the heathen is a curse the one is plenty and the other famine they are direct opposites as has already been explained 255 at the time of the year of famine when the nukva of the heathen reigned no man should have been seen in the marketplace or let flow his source to be a children to another else as has already been explained 256 happy is the man who is careful to walk the way of truth and constantly cleaves to his master it is written to him shall you hold fast and by his name shall you swear to Aram 1020 note that it is not written in him shall you swear but rather in his name which is the nukva called name what then is the meaning of the words you Swear he replied as we have explained you swear have tisheve means cleaving to the secret of faith the nukva called Shiva 7 so named after the 7 svirat chisit bura tifer at netzach hadyazit and malchut which she receives from bina as will be explained presently 257 there are 7 grades above in bina that are superior to all and constitute the secret of the wholeness of faith the ultimate perfection of the nukva is to ascend and clothe these 7 grades chisit bura tifer at netzach hadyazit and malchut of bina the secret of the 7 grades below in the nukva herself is their union and connection with the 7 upper ones so they become one it is therefore written 7 days and 7 days namely 14 days I malachim 865 all is one bound as one for the 7 of the nukva when they are whole ascend and clothe the 7 of bina and they are bound as one and by his name shall you swear to barum 613 alludes to the 7 above and below the joining of the seven of Bina with the seven of the Nukva into one two hundred and fifty eight of whoever joins these seven lower ones with the seven upper ones it is written Hashem shall open to you his good treasure the heaven Devarim two thousand eight hundred and twelve those treasures the seven of Bina above and the seven of the Nukva below the seven days of Bina and the seven days of the Nukva are as one and it is written his good treasure the heaven and and seven to the seven which were upon the top of it Zechariah forty two all of them are one two hundred and fifty nine Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi were walking together when they saw an armed man wearing fringes that sits in Rabbi Shia said this man is either a completely righteous man who wears a fringe talit even while traveling or is a deceiver of men who carries arms and might be a robber yet wears the talit to deceive people and capture them two hundred and sixty Rabbi Yussi said the pious have said to judge every man in a favorable sense we have learned that when a man who sets out on a journey is afraid of robbers. He should meditate upon three things a present a war and a prayer. How do we know this from Yaakov who prepared himself for these three things and was provisioned for presence a war and a prayer as it is written that he sent Bershi 324 Yesav a present he divided the people with him into two camps lest Yesav come and smited in war and he prayed to Hashem deliver me I pray you from the hand of my brother this man who is walking is wearing the talit to pray and has arms for war if he has. These two it is not necessary to look to see if he has the third the present if he has the first two he must have the third 261 when he approached them they greeted him but he did not answer Rabbi Shia said it seems as if one of the three things which should be upon him is absent because he does not respond to our greetings of peace this means that he did not prepare a present as a present comprises peace Rabbi Yossi said it may be that he is praying or reciting his study so as not to. Forget it 262 they walked with him yet he did not talk to them later Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi stepped aside to study the Torah when the man saw they were studying the Torah he approached them and gave them greetings of peace 263 he said gentlemen what did you think of when you greeted me but I did not answer Rabbi Yossi said we thought you were engaged in prayer or study he replied may the Holy One bless be he judge you favorably 264 this I shall tell
Evil man includes them both and in all things comes closer to Hashem as the sages said with your two inclinations a good inclination and an evil inclination 267 the idolatrous nations are included within evil the left which was created for the defilement of their side as they are uncircumcised of heart and uncircumcised of flesh but of Israel it is written truly Elohim is good to Israel 268 you may say he is good for all Israel but that is not true he is good only to those who were not defiled with evil as it is written to such as are of a clean heart for of good and evil good is for Israel alone and evil is for the idolatrous nations alone truly he is good to Israel so they cleave to the Holy One blessed be he thus Israel cleaves to the supreme mystery Zeir and in the secret of faith the Nukva so that all shall become one that is by achieving good they succeed in uniting Zeir and and the Nukva as one and then cleave to them 269 Rabbi Yossi said Happy are we not to have mistaken you for it is the Holy One blessed be he who sent you to us he continued since good is meant for Israel it will then have a portion in this world and the world to come to see the sight of glory I do I it is written for they shall see I do I Hashem returning to Zion Yeshua 528 blessed be Hashem forever Amen and Amen